Well, I was uh, placed as a television uh, producer's assistant, so a TPA, and I really didn't know much about what that was. The first question for that interview was, can you type? And I said, can you ask me another question? So I learned how to type really quickly. I still can't type very well. Um, and, but that grounding gave me uh, a real good understanding of production. And my first show was Koha. And my first producer was uh, Morehu McDonald. Um, and then I worked with Tainui Stevens. So I had a marvelous introduction to television. What I prayed for was that they didn't put me in sports because I didn't know anything about sports. Koha, when I joined, was a 15-minute show that aired on a Sunday night. It's hard to believe now that uh, a, 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 a Māori show would be on a national network at prime time, but it was, and I think it was keenly appreciated. It was viewed at the time as a window into the Māori world, and I don't think it really was. It was for me, anyway. It was a massive undertaking that required the trust of families who entrusted their old people with us. Um, and uh, I worked with an amazing bunch of people, Tainui Stevens, Sue Young. Uh, we created a team and we worked on that for 18 months. It was an hour and a half long record of um, five old soldiers uh, revisiting uh, Italy, Crete and uh, North Africa, and in particular Tunisia. And once again, Tainui, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I could speak French, so that was helpful, particularly when they all got arrested for not having a filming permit. So again, this is another Tainui Stevens uh, production, and it was uh, uh, to look at the record of um, music um, the maybe musical legacy of Māori to popular culture in New Zealand. And that was uh, simply stunning because there was a whole new world that was not of my generation. Uh, you know, people like Daphne Walker um, and a whole bunch of old sh Māori show bands, you know, the Volcanics and all that, that, were, uh, that had been lost a bit in time that uh, that Tainui was able to reclaim. So it was, I can't remember, but it was a, it was a short run series, but it was, I found, intensely interesting. And I was very glad to have the opportunity to work on it. I ended up flying in with a, in a helicopter to, um, to a portiki, and the whole town was waiting for us and we had arrived in a helicopter, which is not a very subtle way of arriving in a place. And my cameraman said to me, as my first day of directing, the, uh, the camera has no more battery. And I said, well, why don't we just get another one from the helicopter? And he said, no, that's it. Meanwhile, the town is all dressed in fancy dress, waiting for their bed race. So you know, I only had a film camera in those days, so I, in the end, after we exhausted every possibility, I said, fake it. We're ready. And the town had their bed race, and I took stills. And then uh, uh, it was um, big. It became known as the Edgecombe incident because I, we carried on to Edgecombe and did exactly the same. By the time we got to Rotorua, I couldn't, I just couldn't continue. I had to tell them the truth. So it was. Uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> it, it just showed me how much importance people placed on television in those days about seeing themselves, and I can really understand that. I asked if I could work on it, and the producer at the time said, "Oh no, you can't." And I said, well, wh "Why?" And he said, "Because you're the wrong race." And I said, "Have you got something against Samoans?" Uh, and he said, but you're not Samoan, you're Māori. And I went, ha, tell that to my father. <laughs> it was hilarious. So he thought, because I was working in Koha and I was brown, that I was Māori. But, uh, yeah, and often Māori would think I was Māori as well. So they'd say, ha, boy, where are you from? And I'd go, oh, up north, up north and to the right, about 3,000 kilometres. 
we had challenges all over the place because we didn't have enough resources, we had high expectations and we had seven different groups and on top of that we had a news section and a news section, a television news section without pictures. So I remember distinctly going to studio with great big maps of the Pacific because they were the only, the only pictures we could do and I would type out the news from Radio New Zealand, from Marnie Niavili, who uh, worked for Radio New Zealand, and he'd write it up, then I'd retype it out onto, onto a television format, um, and we'd go in, and you know, so by the time we got to the studio, the news was probably about two weeks old, uh, and minus the pictures. So you can imagine, uh, this led to a desire to connect and be more current and get pictures. So we kind of pioneered uh, video journalism. We still go out and shoot our own stuff, but only if we have to. But, you know, back in the day, we started off with a high 8 camera and people would throw their hands up in horror and say, how can you put this crap to air? And I said, I can put this crap to air because it matters. I don't care if the people's faces are purple. It's better than having no faces. The first series was about cooking, so it was just you know Pacific Island uh, recipes, uh, but done in a hilarious style. And the other one was we thought, well, there was not enough um, audience and um, feedback on on the screen, so maybe we'll put an audience in there, maybe we'll make a game show. So we made Eaten Alive the game show, uh, which was basically about humiliating people. It always had the same ending, it was a pie in the face, but it was always very funny. Having a drag queen with a cream pie in the face. I think that we've um, managed, uh, despite our, um, you know, uh, our own shortcomings and uh, the high expectations, to try and uh, uh, matter. Uh, and Pacific people, although they're a small part of this community, do matter. They are a defining feature of New Zealand society. And we are a Pacific nation. And I hope that Tangata Pacifica has helped formulate that New Zealand consciousness. We are a Pacific nation. The laughing Samoans are, um, are a phenomenon that uh, is extraordinary. They're a niche, um, uh, they have a niche audience but it is, they're intensely popular. If you have a look at their Facebook page and their, uh, and their own uh, website, they get an enormous amount of hits. When they go overseas, they pack out auditoriums. When they do a show, it will be full because they're funny. So we proposed, well, it wasn't me, it was Aaron Tauma proposed that there should be a series around it. So we did that and we tried to get that energy across on screen. Um, and um, I'm not sure if it was entirely successful but f because of the time slot. But in terms of the time slot, which was 11 o'clock at night, it still performed. But, um, you know, I'm not sure that Palangi New Zealand was ready for the Laughing Samoans, I think they're hilarious and I think they're very gifted men uh, and I'm proud to have uh, worked with them.